I want to share with you something very interesting about carbon footprint. It is a measure of a total amount of carbon dioxide emission of a defined population, system or activity, considering all relevant sources, sinks and storage within a spatial and temporal boundary of a population, system or activity of interest. In other words, in simple words, everything we do, everything we eat, we eat basically generates carbon dioxide. A hamburger generates carbon dioxide because it takes carbon dioxide to grow a cow, it takes carbon dioxide to make up the raw hamburger, it takes carbon dioxide to make the bread, the lettuce, the store, for me to drive to the store. So the hamburger is not just the hamburger. It's the surrounding of the hamburger that contributes carbon dioxide just because I want a hamburger. So carbon foot footprint analyzes how much carbon dioxide a hamburger, just a simple hamburger, generates. So that's a carbon footprint. Now let's a little bit go deeper, one level deeper to understand carbon footprint. We have two families of carbon footprints. The one that we can directly control and the one that we can indirectly control. We can look at a picture and see what aspects can be controlled. Food and catering, indirectly we can control. Again, we have factories, they produce the food, we can decrease the polluted area around the factory, we can reduce the amount of uh, combustible energy that the factory consumes, we can convert the, the generation of the energy being consumed by the factory from, fuel, uh, from combustible uh, fuels to PV systems, so the factory as itself will pollute in a lower level. So we can control, but indirectly, the food. Energy, again, if we generate our own energy, which we need at home, using PV systems, then we will pollute less then the carbon footprint of our home will be lower. US personal average CO2 generation. Let's take a person, an average person in the United States, and see how much CO2 is generated. In the United States, the average person generates about 20 tons of CO2 per year. 3.99, let's say 4. 4 tons coming from energy. Per person. 4 tons per person. Every year. If you multiply the number of people living in the United States, every one by 4 tons, we know how much CO2 is being gen it's generated only in the United States. In the United States, it's 20 tons per year compared to 11 tons for the rest of the industrial nation's average. So only in the United States, it's double than the rest of the world. Little bit more details in the carbon dioxide, uh, carbon footprint, I'm sorry. And I um, specifically would like you to point at the uh, the red square where it says electricity more pv means less co2 and all the other parameters over there all the other subjects over there can con can be controlled but the major part of housing can be reduced its carbon footprint can be reduced by having pv
in order to understand the, com the, the, the CO2 emission, some sizes, some measurements, some weights, let's take the basic figure. Average CO2 emission for electricity is 1.64 pounds, it's approximately 750 grams, per kilowatt hour. A typical annual CO2 emission per household is 20,000 pounds, about 9 tons, based on 1,000 kilowatt hours per month. That's an average per household. Now, in simple words, and com we compare different energy sources. One kilowatt hour produced from natural gas emit po emits 0.18 kilograms of CO2. Now let's compare it to one kilo kilowatt hours produced from coal. 0.33 kilograms, about twice as much. One kilowatt produced from, with diesel emits 0.29 kilograms of CO2. Compares to these three comes renewable energies. One kilowatt, kilo, kilowatt hours produced by the combination of all sources of renewable energy emits 0.04 of CO2. Quite a difference. Now, if we look globally, in 2005, the total world electricity consumption in kilowatt hours was 17 trillion. We can see down in the bottom, what is a trillion? 12 zeros. 17 trillion we consumed in 2005. In 2015, just 10 years after that, the total consumption will be 24 trillion. So it's about 33, 40%, close to 50% increase in 10 years. And in just 20, 30 years, 33 trillion kilowatt hours will be the world electricity consumption. Now, in order to evaluate what is 33 trillions and what is needed to generate this electricity, let's turn to the next slide. What are the chances of generating this lot from a solar power? Let's calculate. We will run a rough calculation, principal calculation, in order to understand what are we talking about. The better parts of the world for insulation, we will talk a lot about the word insulation later in the lecture, but right now it's the amount of solar power received from the sun. Right now, top level description, insulation is the amount of solar power received from the sun. So the better parts of the world for insulation receive an average of around 20, 250 watts per square meter. That's a very general figure. And it's 365 days per year. So every single day, every single square meter on Earth, on the average, receives 250 watts coming from the sun. Simple calculation. 250 times 24 hours a day times 365 days a year divided by 1,000 in order to make it a kilowatts, because 250 is watts, equals to 2,190 kilowatts hours per square meter per year. That's the total insulation, solar radiation on square meter per year. So if I want to look at one square kilometer, okay, it will receive around 2,190 times 1,000 times 1,000 in order to convert it from meters to kilometers, 2.19 billion kilowatts hours per year. Let's continue. So in the year 2030, remember, the world consumption will be 33 trillion kilowatts hours. If we divide it to 2.19 billion, we basically will need 15,000 square kilometers of panels, PV panels. And that's for 2030. 
Let's look, let's look at what is basically the 15,000 kilometers. We see really not the final number. Let's see. If the efficiency was 100%, then really we would, we would need 15,000 kilometers, but the efficiency is not. Kind of a general figure, we look at 15% efficiency for the PV industry. A PV cell, 15% efficiency. 85 is being lost, is not converted to electricity, 15% converted to electricity. So if we assume that our method of converting that energy, PV technology, is only around 15% efficiency, then instead of 15,000 kilometers, we would need 100,000 square kilometers. And this is net panel area. But a PV farm, an array, we're not looking at net, we're looking at gross area. We would need to double that to allow room for roads and other infrastructure within our solar collecting area. Therefore, from 100,000 square kilometers, let's double it 200,000 square, 200, square kilometers on Earth surface to support a consumption of 33, million, 30 trillion in year 2030. Now let's try to get a feel of what is 200,000 square kilometers. The Sahara, the Sahara Desert is around one, 9 million square kilometers. The Arabian Desert is around 2.3 million square kilometers. The Australian Great Sandy Desert is around 2.3 million square kilometers. And there are house roofs, open landscape and fields, commercial, industrial, public buildings. All these things are available. We have to make use of them to get a cleaner world. It was just an exercise to illustrate how only a small proportion of the Earth's surface could produce all the world's electricity in the year 2030, let alone today, let alone tomorrow. It's where we will need 33 trillion.